Hello guys. Okay, this is the first example that we're going to solve using the method of moment distribution. We did this before uh, in slow deflection. And it took like a good three, four pages to solve. First, uh, remember you have to identify uh, if it's a statically determinate or indeterminate. If it's indeterminate, we don't need this. If it's indeterminate, then we, we can use it. So how many degrees of indeterminacy? Three, six, seven, eight. 8 minus 3 is 5, so it's 5th degree. It's in the terminal of 5th degree. That method of forces will take, I don't know, <laughs> a day? A lot of time. I mean, I'm exaggerating. Uh, slow deflection, it will take a couple of pages. So let's see what happens with moment distribution. The first step of moment distribution, step by step, is uh, calculate the uh, member stiffness. And I'm going to calculate the relative member stiffness. Remember, I posted a table in one of the previous uh, problems, but in the back of the book, you have similar tables like this. I just uh, compiled from several sources in, into this one. But if you look at these, the relative member stiffness, K, for the far end fixed is I divided by L. And this is what we have here, far end fixed. This is continuous, this is continuous, can be considered like fixed, and this is fixed also. So all of them is going to be a I over L for all of the all of the stiffness. And because I is constant, I'm going to say 1 divided by L instead of I divided by L. So K, A, B, A, B here is going to be, and all the distances are 8, so it's going to be I divided by 8, and this is going to be equal to KBC and equal to KCE. Same value for all of them. Now the second step is finding the distribution factors. Distribution factors. Once again, how do we find the distribution factors? If you come here, the distribution factor for N fixed is zero. And for all other cases, it's just the summation of the stiffness of the member divided by the total stiffness of the joint. And this is what we are going to do. So the distribution factor for AB and AB and EC are zero because they are fixed. AB, uh, AB yes, and BC. EC is zero. And you can get this zero, by the way, by applying the formula. What is the formula? Let's say that we need the formula for for that. The, the distribution factor formula is equal to K of the member divided by the summation of all the Ks. Okay, for the case of AB, we were dealing with the uh, K for AB. So if we do that, the K for AB is 1 divided by 8. Let's say that I want to do that, right? AB, I know it's 0, but I just want to demonstrate to you. It's KAB, which is 1 divided by 8, or I divided by 8, divided by the stiffness of this joint. The stiffness of this joint is the stiffness of the fixed support and the stiffness of the member. But the stiffness of the fixed support is infinite, and anything divided by infinite is going to be zero. So that's why you get the zero from. Now, if we work with a stiffness BA, because a stiffness BA is going to be also equal to stiffness BC, and it's going to be equal to stiffness CB, it's the same, exactly the same. And it's going to be also the stiffness CE, because of these values are the same. For all of those cases, the distribution factor is going to be 1 divided by 8. Let's say that I'm working with BA. Okay, the stiffness of BA is the stiffness, the K of uh, BA, which is this, 1 divided by 8. And the stiffness of this joint here is this K plus this K. So I divided by 8 plus I divided by 8. And this is 0 0.5. If you want, to make it uh, simpler for you to remember, put the values of the stiffness here. This is for the whole CE span. And then you will have that. So all the other all the other stiffness for BA 
for uh, B A B C C B and C E is 0 0.5 okay this is the second step third step calculate the fixed end moment and the fixed end moment is called FEM fixed end moment once again let's go to the table look at this case fixed end moment AB and BA table this is the case that we have fixed end moment AB is this fixed end moment BA is this both of them are WL squared divided by 12 so for that case like that the fixed end moment okay the fixed end moment here and here is gonna be moment is gonna be WL squared divided by 12 and WL squared divided by 12 for this case is 20 times L squared 64 divided by 12 so the, that moment is going to be equal to 20 times 64 which is L squared divided by 12 106.6 kilonewton meter this according to our convention is positive counterclockwise this according to our convention is negative now the fixed moment for AB and the fixed moment for BC follow the same pattern now the fixed moment for this one for CE then we will be having this situation like that and P is 60 kilonewton here and this is L L divided by 2, L divided by 2 which is 4 and 4 now we can go here and we can see that the moment is PL divided by 8 in this table PL divided by 8 if you can't read that table then go to the books the, the inner part of the bar cover the back cover of the books usually have that thing so this moment is P L once again PL divided by 8 because the load is at the center PL divided by 8 which in this case is 60 times L 8 divided by 8 so the moment for this case is 60 positive in this end and negative in this end once we have that we have every single thing that we need to solve this problem so let's complete our problem so we can start our iterations and calculate our fixed end moments uh, or end forces and end force members at the end so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put here the distribution factor distribution factor as we said for this fixed support is zero and then you have distribution factors I'm not putting any line here because this is just a place where this is concentrated but there is not any moment in it's not any support in that part so in this part the distribution factor for BA is 0 0.5 as well as this 0 0.5 as well as this 0 0.5 and as well as this 0 0.5 and then you have the fixed moment and the fixed moment AB remember is this one positive 106.6 and in this end is this one that means that is that value but negative negative 1 06.6 and for this one once again is this one 106.6 and this is negative 106.6 and in this case is 60 positive and in this other case is 60 negative now we're ready to start we're our step 4 what is our step 4 find or look for the most most 
unbalanced joint. What is the most unbalanced joint? This, that, that, okay, the most unbalanced joint that needs to be locked and unlocked. This is already fixed. I don't deal with this. This is already fixed. I don't deal with that. This joint, as it looks like now, if I locked it, both of them are the same. So it's balanced. But the most unbalanced joint here is joint C. And what is the value that I need for finishing this uh, part? I need to add. I need to add, so let's say here needs 46.6 .6 positive in order to balance that joint. However, 46.6 .6 has to be distributed according to the distribution factors here and according to the inertia and according to the uh, bending stiffness for each one of the members. In other words, what you do is that you multiply this value, which is the needed for balancing, you multiply this value times the distribution factors. If you multiply 46.6 times 0.5, that's going to be 23.3, and as well as this side, because in this case the distribution factors are the same, 23.3. Now this law, this joint, is balanced. However, if you look at the theory, this is happening because I locked that joint. When I locked that joint, I calculated these two, and then I'm going to let it rotate again. When I let it rotate. This is happening because this is the result that I need to put for balancing. But as I apply this moment, because that's what I'm doing, right? And I'm, I'm applying a balancing moment. Since I apply this balancing moment to this one, that moment that I'm applying here is producing another moment extra in this other end. And this is where the carryover factor comes into play. That carrier factor is half of this value as explained in the theory. So this is going to be 11.6 transmitted to that part. Once again, 23.3 times 0.5 is transmitted to that as 11.6. This also transmits to this side 11.1, 11.6, periodic like that. Now this is balanced. This doesn't distribute anything. The, the fixed supports absorb everything that you send them. They absorb it and absorb it and absorb it. That's it. Nothing else. So I don't do anything with that. But this joint now requires of balancing. So the new joint, the new joint uh, needing balancing is the joint B. And the joint B needs negative 11.6. So needs a moment, a negative moment of 11.6. Now once again, how do we distribute this 11.6? This 11.6, I'm going to put it here. But they have to be distributed according to the distribution factors that you have for that joint. Negative 11.6 times this is going to be, and when I say 11.6, I like to put all the decimals, OK? 5.83, so it's, it, it needs to be negative, so negative 5.83 and negative 5.83. By doing that, this joint is balanced. However, same situation. This is transferring half to this side, <coughs> which is 2.916. I have to the and this is transferring half to this side, which is 2.916. Look for the new joint to be balanced again. This is balanced. This is a fixed support. This is a fixed support. So this is the new one. That one is joint C again. And the joint C needs positive 2.916 in order to be balanced. Once again. This value has to be distributed according to the distribution factors that you have over there, which is 0.5 and 0.5. Means I need 1.4583 and 1.4583 in this side. Remember, the summation of the distribution factors have to be 1. Once I have this in this end, this joint is balanced. I send half of that to this end. 
let's send half of that to that end. So how much is that? 0 0.72916. And I need half of that to this side also. 0 0.72916. And look for the new joint to balance. Now the question is when to stop. When I'm going to stop this? Well, you can stop this as you feel like the error is small. What do you mean by a small error? Well, if you started with 100 here, I mean, stop in the decimals, in the, in the small decimal places. I don't feel extremely comfortable stopping it right now. So I'm going to balance joint B again. And I need negative. This amount needs negative 0 0.72916, which is basically going to be distributed joint by joint. And now the, you know these numbers, the decimals, are ridiculously. So I'm going to just put 0 0.365, negative 0 0.365, and negative 0 0.365. And now this joint is balanced. And this joint should distribute to this part half. Same thing, half, 0 0.18, negative. And it should be distributing also half to this side, 0 0.18, negative. And what do we do here now? We balance this joint again. Now join C again. Needs negative 0 point, I mean positive 0 0.18. That means 0 0.09, 0 0.09. And as you can see, these values are really small now. So I'm going to consider that error a very, very small error. So I'm going to lock this joint here. And I'm going to stop transmitting anything at that point. When the, the amount that I have to add for locking and unlocking for balancing the joint is that small, that's sufficient. Now what do you do? Now you are going to add everything side by side, every single one of the columns. Now that would be our fifth step. Uh, and the fifth step it would be uh, add columns to compute moments. And that's what we do. So 106.6666666 plus 2.916666 minus, and this is negative by the way. So negative that minus uh, 0.18. That's going to be 103.57. One oh three point fifty seven. Now let's add this part here. This part here is I'm gonna put the calculator here. That part is negative one oh six point six oops negative one oh six point six minus five point eighty three minus point three six five and that is gonna be negative one twelve point eighty six negative one twelve point eighty six add this up 112.86 that's what you're gonna get there this is balance you see but do it don't don't take my word for it I mean you really do that now uh, do this here at this negative 84.9 84.9 and this one here it will be <coughs> negative 60 plus 11.6 plus 0.72916 is going to be negative 47.6. And these are my end force members, and these are the moments at the end force. What do you do after that? Well, you have the moments, so you come here, and this is what you have the load, the load, the load. This is 60. 20, 20, distributed load. And then you get these moments and you 
put those moments here. This is a positive moment. According to our convention, this is a positive moment. So 103, 57, positive moment. This moment is negative, so it's going to be negative. Negative 112, you don't put the negative point any six you put the direction and then 112.86 and then 84.9 and 84.9 and 47.6 once you have that which are your forces at the end then you can put your values here the forces the shear and then you can proceed to calculate this. Remember, this is the joint A, this is the joint B, this is the joint C, and this is the joint E. Then you proceed to calculate that. How? Summation of moments at C, for example, in this part is zero. So you have 8.49 minus 4.6 minus 60 times 4 plus this reaction times 8 equals zero. And then you solve for this reaction. Then you get the same part. Summation of forces in y equals zero. You already have this. So negative 60 plus this plus this equals zero. Solve for that. Now you go and you do the same thing here and you do the same thing here. If you want this reaction at this joint, remember the joint is going to be like that. And this joint is going to have this force and this force here as well as the two moments. This moment this moment is going to be transmitted here, this moment is going to be transmitted here. But my point is the summation of these two is going to give you the reaction CY. And you do that here. And you do that here also at this end. And, and, and that's it. I mean, once you come here, you repeat the process here. You can calculate this, you can calculate that. And after you have that, you can do the shear moment diagram. Now, I challenge you, I dare you to tell me that this is not cool. This is a super cool approach. Compare this, please, with what we did before. And imagine yourself doing this using the force method. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. So I hope that you like this. I hope that you learned this. This is gonna save your, your uh, I'm not gonna say your life, but it's, it's gonna save a lot of time when you have to do by hand some problems even if you have to use software i wouldn't use software to do this problem honestly first i have to look find for the software and look how complicated this is to work i'm being ironic by the way look how easy is this bye guys now i'm going to do the same problem but i'm going to include settlement in one of the supports so you can see how the settlement is treated with moment distribution keep watching guys stay safe